Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL query training session with Learn at No Star. In today's session, we are going to write a SQL query to reset the running total every time it turns negative. So this is a little bit of tricky scenario and we are going to use the Windows function to achieve this. We have already done tutorials on how to calculate the running totals. So we have a link above and you can check them out if you're not sure how to calculate the running totals. So this is a scenario that we're talking about. We have some data in a table called inventory and we have a running total calculated on the quantity column and every time it turns negative. So you can see here it is minus 200. What we want to do is replace it by zero. So instead of minus 200, we want to treat it as a zero and then calculate the further running total based on this value of zero. So we are going to see how we can achieve this. But before that, we're going to see or take a look at a simpler scenario of resetting values in which we have a particular condition based on which we are going to reset the running total so the condition for us is going to be that reset the running total on every fifth of the month so same table simple inventory table where you have a transaction date you have some product ids and the quantity of the transaction so you can see that on every fifth we want to start with 400 as the base rate instead of the running total from the above entries so that is what we want to achieve now this is more simpler to achieve so first we are going to see how we can achieve this and then we are going to move on to our main query for this session which is going to reset the running total when it turns negative so stay tuned so since we already have the condition defined, the first step that we are going to take is to write a case statement and set a value in a column called flag every time the condition is met. And that is the condition on which then we are going to uh, reset the values. So case when we want to check for the fifth day. So I'm going to use the date function date part, which can check for the date. So the day and the column on what which I want to check is transaction date is equal to 5 then I'm going to set the value as 1 else I'm going to set the value as 0 and I'm going to call it as now if I execute this query, I'm just going to press the execute button. You can see that every time the day is 5, the reset flag will be set to 1. So now I have the reset flag set and I know when I need to reset the values. So now the next step is to identify every time the reset flag is 1 and then just club the records above that and perform a running total within those set of records and then once it is set to 1, create another group of or subset of records and perform a running total within that subset of records. So this grouping technique we have also used in some of our earlier videos where we calculated the end consecutive days excluding the weekend. So there was a break and then we needed to consider it as a continuous streak of data. So the same technique we are going to use a similar technique. So I'm just going to use that technique and show you how the groups can be created uh, differentiating between the conditions on which you want to reset the values and then within those groups you can perform your calculations. So simply what we need to do is let's just put this in a CTE because we need to perform calculations on the results that we have obtained using this. So I'm just going to call it reset underscore flag as and I'm going to put it within brackets. And now I'm going to write my next query. So my next calculation is just going to be a sum on the reset flag values. So I'm going to say sum of reset underscore flag. And then I'm going to use the windows function because that sum has to be done for each product ID. So I am going to use the product ID as my partitioning key. And I'm going to order by, since we are going to calculate the running total ultimately, it is important to have the records properly ordered by. So our order by condition is based on the transaction date. And let's just call it as a group. And this is going to come from the above CTE. So 
so from reset underscore flag okay so let's just call it reset flag because otherwise the column name and the CTE name are going to be same and it might be confusing so now we have this query I'm just going to run this let's also include a star so that we know what exactly is happening so once I run this what you will be able to see is that the first group is has the group number of zero and those are the first four records combined and then the next group starts because it is the 5th of September and it goes in uh, till the end of records that we have. We have records till 8th of September. The group is 1. And then the product ID changes. So again, you have the same group number over here. And then on the 5th of September, again, it changes to 1. So in this case, we have only two sets of groups or subsets generated because our marker is 5th of September. So for a month, there will be two subsets that will be generated. Now, once you have identified these subsets, what you can do is you can just perform a running total within these groups. So I will perform running total within this group of 0 and a running total within the group of 1, which will make sure that my values have been reset for the 5th of September or whatever is our uh, criteria. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this again in another CTE. So this is going to be my, let's say, let's say uh, group CTE as so now i'm going to write my final query which is going to give me the running total so just a simple select statement select star and then the next step is going to be the running total so running total can simply be calculated by using the sum function on the quantity column and what we have to pay attention is to the partitioning so partition by product id as well as the group that we have created above in the group cd and then we have to make sure that we order by the transaction date because that will keep the record in the correct order and we can call it as running total and this is going to come from the above CTE. So group CTE. Now if we execute this, these are the results that we're going to get. So let's just go through the results. So the first group is this. You can see the running total has been calculated. 100 plus 200 is 300. Then you have a minus 500. So that gives you a minus 200 plus 150 is still minus 50. As soon as you go to the 5th September record, you will see that the value is reset to the base value here, which is for which is there for the 5th of September. So 400. So we are not considering these values in the running total. We are starting the counting the running total again from the 5th of September record. So you can see that it goes all the way till the end. And then as soon as the product ID changes, again, the same thing happens. So this is simply how you can reset the values of any running totals based on certain conditions. Now moving over to the more tricky question which is to reset the running total when it turns negative. Now, this is not that easy because you have you don't have a condition or a base condition to check on a column which is present in your table. You have to check the running total value and then find out whether it is negative and then calculate the running total again. And the approach that we are going to discuss today has been provided in Stack Overflow by a person named Itzik. So I'm going to link to that post as well. We are going to use the same approach and then try to reset the values when it turns negative. So step one here is just to calculate the running total as it is. So I'm just going to write a select query. So select star and as we calculated the running total earlier, you just have to do a sum on the quantity column and then define your partitioning. So partition by product ID and order by transaction date as let's say running total from our table inventory. 
So this is what you're going to get in the running total column. So you can see that the first record is 100. Then you add 200 to it becomes 300. But as soon as you add a minus 500 to it, it becomes a minus 200. And the remaining values also will be affected by this calculation. So you can see over here that there is a negative value, which we actually don't want to consider because we just want to reset it to zero. So here, instead of minus 200, I want it to be zero. And the further calculation should be based on this zero value. So what I'm effectively saying here is that instead of this minus 200, to make it zero, I just need to add back the 200. So minus 200 plus 200 is going to make it zero. And all the further values which have been calculated based on this minus 200 amount, I'm just going to keep on adding the 200 back to those values to get the corrected running total value. Now, it's not that the value has been set to negative only once. Even if I reset it to zero, what can happen is that the remaining values the, this scenario might occur again and the value will be set to negative again. So you can see that minus 850 value over here. This is going to, even if we set this to zero, this is going to set the remaining value again, the running total again to some negative amount and we would need to reset again. So whatever is the calculation over here, minus 250, it is going to be the relative difference which we need to add back to reset the value and this relative difference we need to add to the consecutive rows as well till we encounter a bigger negative value which means there was a reset condition that came again so to achieve this what we are going to do next is we have this running total we are going to calculate the minimum value minimum negative value so minimum value would be the negative value to pick up the negative value uh, partitioned by each product id okay and using the windows function so once it gets to the third record the minimum value would become minus 200 and as it goes to this record of minus 250 the minimum value will become minus 250 means there is a negative a larger relative negative number that needs to be subtracted let's put this first in a cte so this is going to be with let's say running total as And now we are going to write the query to calculate the minimum running total within this group of product IDs. So to calculate that again, I'm going to use the min function. Minimum on this running total that we calculated in above CDE. And use the partitioning functions because we want to do a row by row calculation. So partition by product ID and order by transaction date now, now this ordering by is very important over here to consider the records in this particular sequence of transaction dates okay as minimum run total from the above cd from running total now we execute this okay let's include a star here now, if I execute this, let's go row by row and see what is happening. So, the first row, your running total was 100. So, minimum running total remains 100. For the second row, you will see that your running total was 300. So, the minimum value is from the row above, which is 100. Uh, here, what you will see that there is a negative value that has been created. So, this means this is an indication that we need to reset this value because the minimum value that has been created over here is negative what we need to do to correct it or reset the value over here is this is minus 200 we have this minimum value over here we just need to do a plus 200 now here to minus 50 again we need to do a plus 200 to get it to the right value of 150 now all these consecutive records still here for which you see the value of 200 they have been calculated considering or uh, this minus 200 taking this minus 200 into account so you need to add back this 200 to get the corrected running total as soon as it becomes a greater amount you need to add back that amount to correct it now another thing to observe over here is that this needs to be done only when your 
amount the minimum value total amount that you have calculated is negative as soon as it goes positive you don't need to add that so here you can see over here this is a positive value so you don't need to do anything over here so let's put this also in another cte and call it uh, minimum running total cte and then go on and write a final query to get the corrected running total by resetting the values so here what we need to do as a last step is select star and then we have to add this value the minimum running total back to your running total value so your running total value is run underscore total and what we said is that we want to add back this value only if this minimum value is negative if it is positive we are not adding it back what i'm going to write over here is i'm going to use the if function which is going to perform a case kind of operation on this so i'm just going to run, check on uh, this value minimum run total if it is less than zero so i'm going to check that min run total is less than zero if it is less than zero so the condition is true i'm going to take a negative value so min run total so minus 200 minus of minus 200 is going to make it positive 200 which is we are going to add back if this condition is not satisfied which means minimum running total is a positive value i'm just going to take zero so again there's one new function that we are discussing over here. This is similar to case, but it is more compact writing it in the if format over here. And it's easier to understand. So here you write your check or condition and then you just write the value. If it is true, you give the value over here. If it is false, you give the value over here. So these are the arguments for this function if. Okay. And then I just need to call it from the CD that we generated above which is going to be min run total and we can give it a name as let's say new running total and now let's run this and see if we have got the desired results so let's go step by step the first row is going to be 100 which is right the second row is 300 which is also right now here it turned negative minus 200 so we have reset it to zero which is also right the next value to add so we are starting from 150 again now we're ignoring all these records because we have reset the value so what we are doing over here is we are going to start from 150 we are going to add 400 which remains positive 550 it becomes 800 as soon as your minimum running total value increases it becomes minus 250 you can see there was a large negative quantity over here we have to reset the value so we have added back the 250 it becomes zero and then again we start counting from here so this becomes 600 over here and then the product changes for us so this becomes another product so this is 150 the value here goes negative so it is reset and then we start again from 200 so you can check this out um, i will be providing the data and the ddl script for the table that we are using over here and you can see that the correct running total values will be obtained so this is how you can use these windows function to achieve this functionality as well so this was a tricky sql query i hope that you found the solution useful there all the links are in the description below so you can check them out as well again thanks a lot for watching and if you have any more tricky scenarios that you want us to discuss in the videos then please do share them and please do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel like and comment on this video thanks a lot for watching bye